Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another uncanny episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This week's story begins with the Summers family. Christopher Summers was an Air Force pilot. He and his wife, Catherine Ann, had two children, Scott and Alex. Chris and his family were flying south, returning home from a trip to his parents' Alaskan household. It was then that a huge alien vessel, a scout ship for the Shi'ar Empire, appeared in the skies above them. The aliens, it turns out, were on a mission to collect life forms from other worlds, and so their vessel opened fire on the small human craft. In order to save her children, Catherine Ann Summers gave the only parachute on board to her son Scott and had him tightly hold his little brother Alex. Holding each other close, the two brothers were thrown from the plane. Unbeknownst to Scott or Alex, their parents were actually abducted by the alien invaders, and their mother was killed by Emperor D. Ken Nirmani after refusing to become part of his harem. After that, Christopher was sentenced to a life of slavery in the mines of Alsabar. However, he eventually escaped alongside others to form the pirate group known as the Starjammers. But back to Scott and Alex, while the parachute slowed their descent, it caught fire as they fell, causing Christopher to believe that he had lost his entire family. While Scott was able to protect his brother from the impact, he struck his head as they hit the ground, resulting in a terrible concussion. The two boys were recovered by authorities, but Scott spent the next year of his life in a coma. His brother Alex was adopted by another couple, and after Scott's recovery, he spent the rest of his childhood in a Nebraskan orphanage. Here he was plagued by headaches, seemingly as a result of his concussion, but something even more sinister lurked behind the scenes. In truth, this orphanage was secretly controlled by the villainous master geneticist known as Mr. Sinister, who had taken an interest in Scott due to his mutant X-Gene. Sinister learned of Scott's latent mutant power and of his inability to control it due to his concussion. Through secret experimentation, the villain also discovered a substance capable of holding back Scott's deadly power. Scott's memories of Mr. Sinister were erased, but during an eye exam, he was given a set of ruby quartz sunglasses under the pretense of them helping with his headaches. By the time Scott Summers was 17, his uncontrollable abilities had fully manifested, and a continuous beam of concussive energy would unendingly surge forth from his open eyes. Fortunately, the energy seemed to have no effect on Scott's own body, meaning he could contain it by closing his eyes tightly. In addition, wearing the ruby quartz glasses would prevent the force beams from emerging, allowing Scott to see and function normally while wearing them. And indeed, during the years leading up to that, Scott was kept at the orphanage. At one point, a husband and wife named Richard and Trisha Bogart expressed interest in adopting Scott. The boy even got along well with the couple, with Richard being a pilot just like Scott's real father. However, before the applications could be submitted, Mr. Sinister arranged an accident, killing the Bogarts to prevent Scott's adoption. Although Scott eventually ran away himself, leaving the orphanage forever. While Scott was on the run, he accidentally released some of his optic energy, causing a large crate to fall towards the crowded street below. With innocent lives in danger, the boy removed his sunglasses to unleash the full force of his optic blast, destroying the falling crate before anyone was hurt. However, this was during a time when mutants, people born with an extra gene that gave them remarkable powers, were being discovered and anti-mutant hysteria was spreading through the general public. As such, upon seeing Scott's destructive powers, an angry mob formed and the boy fled. Meanwhile, the reclusive professor Charles Xavier, himself a mutant with supremely powerful psychic powers, took note of humanity's growing knowledge of mutant kind. The wheelchair-bound professor used his powers of mental manipulation to enter a government building unhindered and met with the man in charge of the FBI's investigation into mutant activities, Fred Duncan. 
Xavier convinced Duncan that if mutants were tracked down by humans, they may well be driven to become the very evil mankind was afraid of. However, if a fellow mutant were to offer an olive branch, he may very well be able to promote peace. Young Scott Summers, meanwhile, avoided vagrants and authorities while struggling to keep his deadly powers under control. Eventually, he was called to a lone shack in a small clearing by a telepathic voice. Here, Scott Summers met Jack Winters. Jack was a mutant with the powers of telepathy and teleportation, and he decided to take Scott under his wing. However, he was also a criminal who had previously attempted to steal radioactive materials from a nuclear power plant. During the theft, the unstable flask of isotopes exploded, covering Jack's hands in radioactive material. The chemicals reacted with his unique mutant physiology, transforming his hands into living diamond. Winters suspected that if he could expose himself to more of the isotope, he could transform his entire body and increase his power, and he wanted Scott to help him. However, Charles Xavier used a prototype mutant detecting machine called Cyberno, a predecessor to the more sophisticated Cerebro, to track down the two mutants. When Scott and Jack teleported into the nuclear power plant, they found that Professor X was following them. Jack used his strength to collapse the ceiling, forming a wall of debris between the pair and the professor. The two made their way towards Jack's goal, but Scott managed to slip away while Winters reached his destination. When the professor caught up, Scott was holding off a contingent of guards. Xavier ended that conflict by using his psychic powers to knock out the attacking humans. Meanwhile, Jack Winters successfully bombarded his entire body with the radioactive isotope that had increased his strength. This, as he suspected, transformed his entire form into a living diamond. Xavier attempted to incapacitate Winters, but quickly found that his diamond form rendered him immune to mental attacks. Fortunately, Scott was able to knock the villain down with a burst of his optic blast. Then, he and the professor took shelter and began planning their next move. Xavier determined that they could use the machinery inside to render Winters immobile, and began issuing the younger mutant psychic commands. When Winters broke in, Scott activated a vibrational inducer that began hardening his diamond body, preventing him from moving. However, the stubborn mutant struggled against the forces so strongly that his body cracked under the pressure, shattering and killing him. After that, with nowhere to go, Scott accompanied the professor back to his Westchester mansion. Here, Xavier revealed his plan to recruit a team of young mutants to teach them to use their powers for good, to provide a home for young mutants and protect humanity from evil. Scott agreed with the professor's dream and was given a uniform and visor to better control his optic blasts. Xavier trained Scott, teaching him to use his power efficiently and effectively. Over the course of their time together, Professor X saw great potential in the young mutant, not just as a soldier in the fight against evil, but the potential to one day be a great leader for their people. Scott Summers was given the codename Cyclops and became the first of Xavier's new recruits. And thus the X-Men were born. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, leave a comment, and share it on your favorite social media. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to my various social medias, including my Twitch channel. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!